The Zions Bank Coaches Show with Kyle Whittingham starts now. Welcome to the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show. The coach joining us after the win over UNLV. You're five and four now. You got a bye week to get ready for the final three game sprint. We'll get to that in just a second and talk about what you do at the bye week. But first, uh, some congratulations to uh, to pass out. Brent Castile had a big game for you yesterday. Three touchdowns. He did. He did. He had uh, five catches overall and. Uh, got in the end zone three times. Uh, Brett had a great game. Uh, Daryl Poston had his highest output uh, rushing the football. So a lot of positive things came out of the game, and uh, you know, defense scored. Uh, again, I think that's the fifth or sixth time we've scored on defense this year. So it was a good afternoon for the Utes. You're looking to get the ball to Brent, figuring he's a playmaker, and it's usually a mismatch if you can get him isoed up on somebody. Yeah, he's got such great quickness and speed, and you know, the more times we can get the ball in his hands, uh, you know, the better. And he was, uh, you know, did the most of it uh, on Saturday, and you can see him scoring here. He was, uh, you know, just he's got that big play capability. Is what he's got. I asked him after the game. I said, "When's the last time that uh, you scored more than three in a game? If you had four or more than that?" And he said, "Well, you know, high school." And he said he should have had six yesterday because he went <laughs> down at the one twice, yeah. and he's a little bitter about the <clears throat> lateral being ruled forward lateral because that was his favorite play of the game. But he also said he got chewed out on the sidelines. Too risky, too, uh, too turnover prone to move there. Well, it wasn't his fault. I mean, you know, it was a bad decision to lateral the football. You never want to put yourself in a situation like that and risk a turnover. I mean, that was just not, not the best decision. We'll get that correct. He said it was guilt by association. He got worked over a little bit. All right, uh, you mentioned uh, Brett Ratliff had a big game for you. Mm -hmm. Threw four touchdown passes and ran for a fifth. And those are great numbers everyone focuses on. But 19 to 23, that's pretty yeah. efficient. He threw the ball exceptionally well. Uh, made good decisions. Only missed a couple throws. You know, the one down at the at the one yard line just uh, put a little bit too much on it and overthrew the the tight end open in the back of the end zone. But but uh, he took care of the football for us. You know, he didn't uh, didn't throw any interceptions. Was very accurate and uh, his best day uh, of the season, without a doubt. You guys get the win here, and the offense was fired up. They did get some short fields from the defense to set up a field goal and to set up a score. And then, to, uh, and then, of course, you mentioned the, uh, the touchdown return off the turnovers. It was odd. It, it almost sounds like you're brainwashing some of your players because I'm talking to your defensive guys after the game. After the final score, turnovers are the most important statistic. And I'm thinking, wait, I've heard that somewhere before. Well, you try to make impressions on them of what, uh, you know, what are the keys to victory, and that, there's no question about that. And, and like you said, you know, we had two interceptions. Linebackers uh, both got, uh, you know, both interceptions. Uh, Malachi Mokofisi there, and then, uh, you know, J.J. Williams, who took his to the end zone right here. And then uh, got a short field on a kickoff return. You know, one of the uh, kickoff coverage unit knocked it loose and uh, put him on the 15-yard line going in. It looked like Fano forced the fumble there, yep. hitting a guy low and spinning him around. Yeah, Fano's done a great job this year, you know, special teams-wise. He's an unselfish player, uh, does whatever we ask of him. You know, he doesn't get a lot of reps at receiver, uh, doesn't get a lot of catches, but he does all the dirty work. He, he, he blocks, he plays special teams, he does all that for us. People saw Mike Liddy go down. They're probably wondering uh, his stat. How is he? Not good. We're, we're probably looking at surgery. You know, we'll know definitively tomorrow. But uh, the doctors looked at him today, and and uh, looks like we've lost him for the remainder of the season. So that's that's not a positive thing at all. Any other injuries? Uh, R.J. Rice uh, got his ribs uh, broken. You know, it's a situation where he'll be gone down for a few weeks. Uh, other than that, just some bumps and bruises. We shouldn't be. Uh, you know, be missing anybody other than those two for the CSU game. Let's take a look at the Mountain West Conference standings now. A little movement with uh, BYU beating Air Force and with TCU really dominating Wyoming down in Texas. Utah, Wyoming, Air Force, New Mexico, big log jam in second place at three and two. Cougars two game clear in the loss column. We put TCU in there. Technically, they're one and two and six, but I'm looking at their schedule. They've already played U. They've already played BYU. They've already played Wyoming. Things are kind of set up. They're five and two, but TCU could run the table and finish ten and two. They certainly could. They're a quality team, and and uh, you know we said weeks ago they were going to do some damage throughout the rest of this uh, conference play, and and uh, you know I don't see them uh, not being able to get that done. Yeah. All right. Now you've got your bye week here, and uh, that can mean downtime for some people. Maybe for players who are a little banged up, but coaches there is no downtime. Is this uh, recruiting week then? You get out and uh, do as much, uh, see as much, and talk to as many people as you can. Yeah, we'll practice. Uh, we'll watch the film tomorrow and, and uh, lift and so forth, and practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we'll send the uh, seven assistant coaches. Uh, myself and the two coordinators will stay in, but the seven assistants will hit the road Tuesday night and be in place Wednesday morning, and we'll recruit Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week. Is this a year you have to recruit a? 
quarterback? Because I'm looking at how things stack up in 2007, and you'll have, it looks like, three quarterbacks with Tommy Grady being a senior next year, Brian Johnson a junior, Kevin Dunn would be a sophomore. Is this a year to go out and get a guy, or with kids wanting to play and no one wanting to wait, you have to wait another year to get a high school no, kid? How does that work? We're going to go out and get one this year. we got one uh, slot on the recruiting uh, numbers board to dedicated to a quarterback and we need to bring one in yeah and in the secondary a lot of the guys we've been mentioning uh, Eric Shine had the big pick down at New Mexico we've been talking about uh, uh, Eric Weddle Sean Harper who's been out injured and is now back mm -hmm. you got a lot of seniors in the secondary do you go out and look for JC guys there do you already have guys in the program how does it work in the secondary yeah we're, we're uh, losing the majority especially at the corner position and we're gonna go out and uh, pick up a couple JC's and uh, you know a couple freshmen we got we'll probably take uh, seven or eight secondary you know safety slash corners uh, in this recruiting class. Yeah, so you got your work cut out for you. Got our work cut what, out. Where else are, besides quarterback in the secondary, what else are priorities for you guys? Well, the uh, the defensive line, you know, we lose Paul and Kelly, you know, so we're losing two uh, exceptional defensive linemen. But uh, the running back position, you know, we, uh, we're going to you know, look at taking a running back or two. And, and uh, really, you know, across the board, you got holes to fill, but the biggest holes are in the secondary. All right, take a uh, look at the uh, Sinclair schedule here. This is what the Utes have coming up now. Just uh, three games to go, a bye week. Colorado State at home at Air Force, and then the season finale with BYU to wrap things up. And a guy who's uh, getting down to it now is our guest this week, down to his last three with a bowl game, last four games in a, uh, in a uniform playing college football. I think we know why you brought Brett Ratliff in with five touchdowns yeah. this week. No question. He had, a, he had an excellent day. And, you know, that's really back-to-back -back, uh, excellent performances by Brett. Last week against the Mex was his best performance of the season, and he topped out this week. So easy choice this week on who to bring on. What's been the difference for you the last couple weeks? Um, definitely, I think it just settled down a little bit, you know, just pressure with, you know, the, the whole season, you know, just trying to do what I did, you know, finish how I finished the season last year, just coming back and doing the same thing. But definitely just settling down and just, you know, taking my role as a starter. So. Is it a different deal when you step in because of an injury at the end of the year and there aren't many expectations, you play the arch drive on a bowl game versus you're the guy and the whole season's in front of you? Well, definitely, you know, when you come in at the end of the season, you know, there's not really much, you know, like you said, there's not much expected from you. You're not expected to do much. You're not expected to, you know, win, really win games for for, uh, for the team. But, uh, you know, when, when you come in as a starter, um, all, all, the, all the eyes are on you and you got to go out there and, you know, and, and play from week to week and, and continue to make plays. And uh, uh, I think I'm getting back to that, so. How are you different now than a year ago? What have you gotten better at that maybe people don't notice? Um... Definitely just settle down, like, you know, I mean, everybody talks about the BYU, by BYU game last year, but, uh, I mean, I was, I was definitely really nervous in that game, and it showed, that's why I ran the ball so much, tucked it down, I wasn't really confident in what I was doing. I think my confidence in just being able to, you know, throw the ball and, and my reads, you know, going through the reads, you know, wh who I'm going to throw the ball to, um, and just my knowledge of the game is, you know, a lot greater, so. What stat did you like better in the game, the 19 of 23 passing or the one catch for 22 yards? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, chuckle from the coach. Yeah, the the one the, the the one catch would have been better if it would have gotten the end zone. I think that would have been the better stat. You know, I always I always um, fr Fridays before the game, I'm, me and uh, Brian Johnson are always throwing the ball around so you can make the best catches. And um, I mean, I always love to go out and and uh, make plays like that and just you know try to do something else and, and then play quarterback. You know, but uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to do that, and I think it really got the team going. So. Put in one more wrinkle. You got a bye week. There's got to be another play where you can catch the ball, something you can draw up. You got it. You got an extra week to, to uh, talk the coaches into that. Thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate it, and good luck uh, down the stretch in the final month. All right, thank you. All right, we'll be back with more on the Kyle Whittingham Show in just a moment. Stay with us here on KJS. Welcome to Zach and Andrea's. Recently, Science Bank helped them get into this attractive townhome. Zach and Andrea plan to spend the next few months repainting and looking for an affordable used car. And Zions Bank will be there every step of the way, with low interest loans and internet services that fit their lives. Which is why we continue to say, we haven't forgotten who keeps us in business.